refugee crisis, first of all, we should ask ourselves why the refugees come to Europe. People say crisis in Europe, refugee. I'm sorry, the crisis is not in Europe. The crisis is in the Middle East and in North of Africa. That's where the crisis is. Not only a crisis, a, a drama. When I was in the commission, I visited not only Zatari camp in Jordan, but I also visited Lampedusa, a, a small island in the south of Italy where I had an experience I'll never forget. And frankly, I hope no one goes through it to be in front of 300 coffins because those were people that were drowning when they were coming to the coast of Italy because they want to join Europe, because they want to live in Europe, because they know Europe is peace and Europe is prosperity. It's true that this refugee and illegal migration crisis put a lot of pressure in Europe, but once again, I believe what's going to happen with this is exactly what happened with the euro area and with the financial crisis. For the first time, the governments of Europe are now discussing mutualization of the refugee policy and until now was simply national. Let's not forget that. According to the treaties, the refugee policy is a strictly national policy. The governments have the right to give or not refugee status. It's not European Union. European Commission has no competence on that. But now, for the first time, the governments are discussing what they call burden sharing and there is an attempt to come with some common positions. Of course, there are resistance, and it's interesting to see what the resistances are. At the same time, we have the position of Germany. I think a very enlightened and courageous position of Chancellor Merkel. She's taking, by the way, the right position considering the German interests. But, of course, there is strong resistance to that. I think this is the most challenging crisis we are facing today in Europe. It's more difficult than the financial crisis because it's not just about money, it's about political acceptance. And what we have today in Europe, in some sectors of Europe, we have a strong resistance to foreigners, to legal migrants. And that is the real issue. If you look at the motives behind UKIP party, the party that is advocating the Brexit in Britain, if you ask them why do you vote the reason is they don't want foreigners. They say in their, in their communication it's about against Brussels, against bureaucracy in Brussels, but I mean, that's not the real issue. The real, real issue for them is there are too many foreigners in Britain. So xenophobic forces exist in Europe. And when you know the history of Europe and the old demons, I think we should be attentive to that. How to fight this xenophobia? How to be sure that we keep Europe open at the same time that we have, are able to control our borders? But my question to you is the following. Do you think it's only European problem there? Don't you have that problem here in the United States? When we see a leading candidate to the presidential, I mean, making the comments he made about Mexicans? Or just the positions he took now against all Muslims? So, my dear friends, we are living in a very difficult and complex world where globalization is in fact feeding this kind of nationalistic, nativist, xenophobic, sometimes racist attitudes. And this is a problem not only for Europe, for many of us that believe in ethics, in international relations, and we have to fight together against those negative sentiments that have a very deep history in some of our societies. Yes, there is a problem in Europe, but it's not a specific problem to Europe. And the solutions that we have seen now with the tragic uh, events in San Bernardino, the solution is not to close European borders. Because the United States has, I mean, the United States has a full control of the borders. But it can happen. If you have suicide bombers, fanaticized, they can be anywhere. Even if you protect, you close your borders. So we have to see how deep this issue is and try to avoid simplistic, populistic answers to very complex and difficult challenges. It's not by closing Schengen. On the contrary, it is by Schengen that we can fight because terrorists, they don't respect borders. And it is precisely exchanging intelligence and information, putting together the national resources against terrorism, that we can succeed in the fight against this kind of uh, violent jihadism that we have today as the major threat not only to Europe but to the world and to our values. Mm -hmm.